Adams and I've been asked to do weekly vlogs for the Farmer's Guardian because I won a net zero competition earlier this year. I'll get into more details of that in a second, but just to give you a brief introduction, um, I am a farmer, arable farmer, as well as a consultant, um, which means I provide advice for other th farmers around the country. Um, so this farm at home is a family farm we produce combinable crops such as wheat, barley, oats, peas, beans and oilseed rape. Um, we're a mix of owner occupied, rented and contract farm for other people. Um, we also do some firewood on the farm, we have lots of woodland around and we rotationally thin this. Um, so not taking out all of the wood but taking out some of it and letting it regenerate. Um, and we also have sheep on the farm as well, um, they're not our own. Uh, we rent out grazing on our cover crops over the winter as well as our grassland throughout the year. We are also in some environmental schemes across the farm, mainly, mainly in the sustainable farming incentive pilot, um, which means we have areas of the farm often in the lower producing, like field corners, field edges, wet bits, um, and these are down to various different plots, um, such as pollination or winter bird habitat or water buffering. So the School of Sustainable Food and Farming Net Zero competition. Um, so I do a lot of trials across the farm year to year um, just to see what different things work um, and just to innovate and just plan going forward. Things are always changing. Um, you've got to try new things and see what happens. Um, so the competition I entered was called the Journey to Net Zero competition and my entry was based around intercropping. And what intercropping is, is when you plant at least one, at least, sorry, at least two crops at the same time and you manage to bring them both to harvest to both go for a combine. For example, like putting beans and oats together in the same field, growing them together and then harvesting them at the same time. This goes against the norm a little bit as you would also, or normally expect a monoculture so to grow one crop at the same time and keep that one crop in the same field throughout the year before harvest um, so the idea behind this is to always grow one of these crops with a legume and what a legume does is it fixes nitrogen from the air um, puts it into rhizomes in the soil um, through bacteria and it allows other plants to be able to use that nitrogen in order to grow so I'm in two fields currently where I'm going to be doing my trials um, in one at the moment and I'm going to be doing eight different plots throughout the year um, and these eight different plots are going to have different mixes in um, at least two crops at the same time um, this is going to be made up of two different cereals which will be barley and oats um, three legumes peas beans and vetch and two brassicas, which will be white mustard and spring oilseed rape. So why I decided this would be a solution to net zero is because you can grow these crops with absolute minimum inputs. Um, so I will literally just be spraying off the, the cover crop, any ground cover, all this on the floor. And then I'll be drilling it rolling it in to make sure the soil seed contact is there and then hopefully leaving it all the way to harvest before it's then collected up so the idea is if i'm growing two crops hopefully i can get at least a 60 percent yield off of both of them compared to the 100 percent yield i would expect in one field and the idea is if that's on the same area that creates 120 percent overall so you're gaining a larger output from a smaller area of land and that's called the land equivalent ratio and that's where the idea behind this comes in minimal inputs no nitrogen it should also leave some nitrogen behind for a following crop um, and more outputs off of the same area i see it as an all-round win so um, i'm going to be doing eight different mixes this year um, i will then be following with a winter wheat crop so i'll be treating this into crop trial as a break crop um, and then so that winter wheat crop will be in the second year i will then be following that winter wheat crop with an over winter cover crop before the following spring in the third year where i'll be going back in with more intercrops 
um, over the same area, 16 and a half hectares, these two fields are together. And probably I will do what works the best or what worked best in the first year. Um, so there might not be as many, there might be new ones. Um, it depends what happens really. So this is one of the fields here. The other one going through that hedge gap just there, the other side. Um, and we did have an overwinter cover crop on this field. Well, we still do, but uh, <laughs> due to the minus 10 frosts, it's all but pretty much died. Um, it's just really volunteer cereals from the previous winter wheat crop left. Um, here you can see is the remains of a mustard. Um, we've still got some beans still surviving. Um, there's some oats there just kicking about. Um, but it's mostly just black grass as you can see here. Um, some charlock. Um, sorry, cranes bill. And thistles, <laughs> really. Um, but it's still a nice cover. It's done its job while it was here before it's disintegrated. Um, these two fields were the last two fields we ploughed on the farm about four or five, no, three or four years ago now. Um, trying to get it back into some reasonable shape. Um, and it looks quite nice on top. So the net zero competition. Um, so basically I decided to enter just because, as I said, I do quite a lot of trials anyway. And I really just needed to upscale them, try and find out what works. Um, if I wouldn't have won some money towards doing this, then I probably would still just be doing little tramline trials. Um, but instead, um, now I've got some money behind it, I can do 16 and a half hectares with lots of different complicated things. And yeah, just really upscale what I was doing and push it on further, really. Um, I was just looking through the mix to try and find any remains of any sort of cover crops we had before. Um, there's not a lot there really. Um, just volunteer grasses, grass weeds, and then a few standard broadleaf arable weeds. Um, oh well, it's still nice. Um, it's still covered anyway. Um, so going forward, what I'll be doing first is I will be drilling the, ooh, trying to get dizzy. I'll be drilling the field behind me first. Um, they're going to be the crops that are less susceptible to frost, um, so you can get those in earlier. That field there has also got less black grass pressure than the one I'm in now. Um, so hopefully if we leave this one a little bit later, um, it has been planned, so these crops are suited to be planted later in this field. Um, so it, yeah, so if we leave it later, um, we have a better chance of controlling black grass through the subsequent crop, um, which would otherwise be quite a shame. So going forward, as I've got to do these monthly videos for the Farmer's Guardian, um, I thought I might as well put it on YouTube and try and do a little bit more. Um, so I'm thinking about doing a monthly update probably. I know it's already the start of February, but I'll try and do a January one. Um, hopefully update you on what's been going on along the farm. Um, as I am a consultant at the same time, I'll be trying to give policy updates and any things that might be interesting to farmers, um, any new announcements that come out, um, and hopefully just inform on what's going on at the present time and keep it as a bit of a, uh, well, I suppose a video diary um, in a way. Ooh. Birds flying around everywhere. Block of winter wheat here. Um, this block here had few cultivations before harvest, um, before harvest, before drilling. Um, so it looks quite well at the moment, all that mineralization. Um, if I just turn you around here, it's also had some muck on it. Can just see some remains there. Uh, but it looks pretty good. I think this is my group two mix. Um, Group two, I can't really try to remember what's in it. I think this is Cordial, um, Xtays, and also a new a new group two variety called Palladium. Um, so quite happy with this, but because of those extra cultivations and disturbances, there's a bit of black grass, um, especially in the wetter corners. 
Um, also, in this field here, we are running some trials with seed treatments. Um, so you can't really tell anymore, but straight down there, so the left of it, to the left of it, so there's six meters this way, and you can kind of see where the coulters join up there. Um, so in, in this six meter bout to my right, that has had no seed treatments, no nothing. So it's just undressed seed straight out of the shed, um, mixed and clean straight out, nothing on it. Um, but then the rest of the field has got tyros, which is a seed treatment. It's an endophyte seed treatment. And what endophytes are, so when the mother plant drops all its seeds after it matures, um, the mother part pass, passes on these things called endophytes and basically they are what allows that seed to survive. But when you combine a seed, um, put it in a trailer, put it for a dryer, put it for a cleaner, store it in the shed for a few months, those endophytes are killed. Um, so this seed treatment is a biological seed treatment from Unium Bioscience, I think it is. So they're des designed to replicate that effectively. Um, so we've got quite a few of those trials going on this year because we don't really use seed treatments anymore. We don't see the point. Um, so we'll see how those develop. But yeah, so these, this was planted mid, mid October sort of time. Um, looks quite well at the moment. I'll just show you the last, last block of wheat that we've got this year. So this is it, that last block of wheat. Um, a little bit thinner, very stony. This field hasn't been rolled yet. Um, so this is now a second wheat because this is where our oral seed rape was or is supposed to be. Um, and there's about 60, I think it was 65 hectares we were supposed to have in oral seed rape this year. Um, because it was home safe seeds, so there wasn't a huge cost. Um, only had two bouts of slug pellets down the drill around the outside, so not a lot there. And we had some free buckwheat seed from um, Anglian Water. Uh, so there wasn't a huge cost that went into it. We didn't glyphosate it before we sprayed the oil, before we drilled the oil seed right because there was no point. Um, and basically, we never got any rain. It never came. Um, so in mid December, not mid December, in mid November, we decided to go straight in, spray it off, go straight in with um, winter wheat crop just out the shed. Um, and this was the first field we did. Um, very weed three, fit free. It does, it doesn't really look thin or anything like that. I think we drilled this at about 240, 250 kilos a hectare, something like that. Um, so I'm quite happy once it's rolled. We'll pro this will probably have some early nitrogen, early urea in sort of um, early February sort of time. But no, I'm quite happy. But there was some stuff that we drilled a little bit later. Um, and this, so this was in the first week of November. And we also did some wheat that was in the second week of November. And that was a little bit wetter, a little bit tackier. Um, so I'll just go show you that briefly now. So this is one of those later drilled crops, kind of mid-November. It looks all right down the rows, um, quite thin from here. Um, but there seems to be something that's gone wrong with a spray or something. And if you come further over into here, you see this. And yeah, I don't know. That's black grass that has not died and I do not know what's gone on why maybe there was an issue with a sprayer or something something didn't get put in something's gone wrong it got rained on um but yeah that's an absolute carpet here and you can see this this field is really bad for it but it's just a massive great patch um, 
So yeah, I'm really not sure what to do here. This can't be taken to harvest, obviously, because, well, all this seeding, I mean, we come over here, it looks proper thick. Um, yeah, absolute nightmare. So I don't know, we've already had to redrill this field once from obviously draped wheat. And then you look at that, that all that green, that is black grass. Um, so there's absolutely no way that this can go to harvest. I don't really want to spray it off and drill something else again. Oh God, I have no idea what to do. Absolute pain. Real pain. Maybe spray it off and just put some oats in. Try and keep it low input. Uh, not sure. Future dilemma. Better ring up the agronomist. Need someone to blame it on, really. <laughs> yeah, that about wraps up, really. Um, hope you enjoyed the first video. I want to show you all the bad bits, all the good bits. Um, it's a bit of an introduction, really. Um, hopefully in February there should be a lot more going on. Um, can delve into a few different specifics on things. Um, I am driving, but don't worry, I'm on a farm truck, not on the road. Um, but yeah, I might show a few different uh, policy updates that uh, occurred during January, which was quite interesting. Uh, the announcements at the um, Oxford Farming Conference of the new stewardship rates. Um, uh, but most importantly, some of the new SFI standards that have come out, um, which were quite good for arable farmers from the looks of it, um, but seem to be really lacking with grass and options. But um, I'll go through the specifics of those as well. Um, just give you a bit of an update in a minute. So at Oxford, it was announced that there will be payment increases for countryside stewardship again. Um, it's about 10% on increase, it's roughly the same as last year. Um, it is also going to be for capital items as well, um, which is nice because they haven't been increased for years. Um, and also it was announced for the SFI, there will be a management payment, um, which is about £20 per hectare, up to 50 hectares, uh, which is up to a grand. At the end of January, it was announced the SFI 2023 standards. Um, some more payments for hedgerows there, because I think they're quite underfunded as it is. IPM plan, quite cheap. Um, AB8 type mix there. But um, companion crop and insecticide, they're fairly decent payments. These are all the same, really, as countryside stewardship options. Um, Apart from grassy blocks and corners, that's good. That's come from HLS and ELS. But as you can see, going through those grassland options, uh, um, there's not a lot really compared to those arable. So thanks for watching my little uh, introductory video um, for the School of Sustainable Food and Farming and my Net Zero competition, and just a bit of an introduction around the farm. Um, I promise to make next ones a little bit more enjoyable with more things to look at rather than me just standing around in the field um but cheers thanks for watching